guys, this is the top five shows that everyone should watch on the WWE Network. Now, the first one is going to be Table for Three. Uh, this show is actually pretty good. It's when they will bring a group of three people who are either relevant for a certain kind of match or style that they had or for the time period that they wrestled in or even they had a group like the Nation Domination, the NWO one. They did um, third generation superstars. They had a woman they had a couple women's one. They had WrestleMania special ones. These are cool. They're about 20, 25 minutes long and it's three wrestlers all talking about their careers where they are now and um, just pretty much what happened between the time they stopped wrestling and what they're up to and also a little bit backstage information about that time period that they had when they were all together as a team and they all make sure that all of them make sense. It's not like they just throw three people in and they're like, okay, you guys are going to have lunch and you're going to talk about some random stuff and record it. They really make sure the three people they pick are uh, definitely good per episode. Four is Ride Along. This is a series that started two seasons ago, so it's about a year old. It just came back for season three or four, I think it is. And this is awesome. So per episode, we're going to have four to five people. It's going to be two car trips. Each, tr uh, each car will have two to three people in it. The one that just aired had the whole shield in it. And then uh, the other car was Bailey and Sasha. It was hilarious. It just... Them telling stories about them being on the road, talking about uh, behind the scenes stuff, and more than actual, they talk about their personal life on this show, and that's something very rare that you see in WWE, where they don't really want to let you into their personal life too much, but they kind of just do and ride along, and it's just like an easy way of kind of knowing a little bit more about your favorite superstar without going too personal into their life, but they do give a pretty good conversation. These shows do run about 20-25 minutes long, but the last two have been running closer to the 20 minute mark. So if you have about 30 minutes on your hand, check out Ride Along, definitely worth it. Three is pretty much my favorite show or the one time that they pulled it on the network. This is Camp WWE. This is definitely for a mature audience. Like. When they go to put it on and it says mature audiences only, I really thought it was a joke. No, it, it is. There is a lot of bad language in this show. There is nudity in this show. There is sex in this show. There is just everything you would see in an adult comedy is like slammed into this 18 plus mature rating show. And it is amazing. Each episode is about 18, 19 minutes long. And I think there's 11 of them. Perfect. I wish they would have made a season two. I know uh, because the superstars that they originally had in the first season, a lot of them left and aren't there anymore, and they would have had to animate new people in. I think they just dropped it due to that reason, but honestly, it's it's so good. There's not really much you can say because it is uh, very mature of, for a show, and I don't want to like turn people off. If, especially, it's not for little kids, it's, uh, I would say, at least be 10 years old if you're going to watch this show. Second is WWE 24. Now, these are hour-long specials or 45-minute long specials that are about a certain subject. They do one for WrestleMania every year. They've had one for 31, 32, and 33. Goldberg's getting one. Finn's had one. Shield had one. Daniel had one. Seth had one. And, uh... I think Roman got one, too. I know Kurt Angle might be getting one as well. They were working on a Dolph Ziggler one at one point. I don't know if that's happening. But 24 is pretty much a documentary about your favorite superstar. On top of that, it's all aimed around one point. It's typically aimed towards the road to WrestleMania or SummerSlam. That's pretty much where they always pull their 24s from. So you're more likely to watch it because those are the two high points in wrestling. Of course, you have the summer. And then you have March for WrestleMania. So yeah, it did, it's just so good. Like every single time you watch it, you're learning so much about that time frame. Especially the WrestleMania ones. When they go behind the scenes, show you everything that you just saw and how it was made. It blows my mind. I love watching them. Those are one of the shows that I will stay up for after Raw. Um, I'll stay up to like 1 o'clock in the morning to watch them. Because it's worth watching the moment it goes live on the network. The only thing that sucks for 24 is, is they will not... Put them on the network up for airing until after the Raw ends with a uh, ride-along and table for three. Most of the time, they will be up before Raw. 
So it's not really the first showing after all. You can pretty much watch them anytime you want during that day. It's just a little trick that I've learned about the network if you didn't know. So the very... Yeah. So the best thing the WWE Network has to offer has to do with NXT. Now I didn't put NXT on here because that is a show of its own and it's a series and I don't know, I feel like that's his own category of itself. But I did put on the takeovers. Because let me tell you, takeovers are better than every pay-per-view. Don't believe me? NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, you might think I'm biased because it went, was a hell of a lot better than SummerSlam. Last three years, it blew SummerSlam out of the water. Survivor Series, they're bringing back war games. So NXT, you're getting war games. And then you're going over to Survivor Series and you're getting Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar. Guess what pay-per-view is going to be better already? War Games, NXT. NXT is kind of like, okay, we're going to give you what the fans really want. And if it goes over well, maybe Raw and SmackDown will take it over. But we're going to do the guinea pigs of NXT and we're going to give the fans what they really want. Which is why NXT is so much better. Like, the takeovers are beyond amazing. I look forward to them more than I actually do the pay-per-views coming up. Like, it's sad that I know there's only one more takeover before the end of the year. Because I would love a takeover every month because they're so good. And NXT itself is great. Like, we're giving you matches that we really want to see. But, and Raw and SmackDown pay-per-views, sometimes we're not given those matches. So overall, NXT TakeOver is the best thing the network has to offer. And if you do not watch it before the pay-per-view, I highly suggest just watch it. It's going to be better than the pay-per-view. Just watch it while the pay-per-view is going on because I promise you're not going to miss anything during the pay-per-view. So yeah, so to recap, there's the five best shows on the WWE Network. We have Taylor for Three, Ride Along, Camp WWE, WWE 24, and NXT TakeOver. Make sure to like this video and subscribe because there's always more to come.